What is good, everyone? Welcome to the Sneaker History Podcast. My name is Nick Ingvall, and before we get into today's episode, I'm going to ask a small favor from all of you. We've uploaded over 350 episodes of the show, and we're slowly creeping up on 600,000 downloads. I honestly can't even wrap my head around it. That is insane. Thank you so much for listening and being a part of this journey with us. If you could take a moment to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, hit that follow button on Spotify, and give us a rating, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm looking forward to taking the show to new levels in the coming months with more guests from the community, talks with industry professionals, and deeper dives into the sneaker stories that shape this obsession we are all so passionate about. And your support is going to make that happen. So thank you in advance. One last thing before we get into this episode, do the right thing. Tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a compliment will take you. And we all know how good it feels to be on the receiving end of some appreciation. Jordan trying to shake off Starks. Oh, what a oh, 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 oh. LeBron James with no reward for human life. Final seconds. Bryant for the win. Bang! Iverson against Gill. The crowd on its feet. Allen for the win. Welcome yeah. to the Sneaker History Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Sneaker History Podcast. We have a super fun episode today. I'm here with my guy, Mike. How you doing, man? Doing good, man. How you doing today? I'm great. We have two fantastic guests. We have Jennifer and Joe from Mike's hometown. Well, I guess not hometown. From Mike's area currently. (laughs) um, Of Houston Premium Goods Footwear Mega Store. That's not the proper name. But (laughs) when I looked it up, everything felt like a super mega store. So you guys rock. Um, So we have Jennifer and Joe here. Um, Why don't you two go ahead and introduce yourselves? Um, to the audience here, and whoever your favorite Houston athlete or artist is, just kind of start the conversation. Okay. Uh, my, I'll start first, ladies first. Um, my name is Jennifer Ford. I am the owner of Premium Goods here in Houston. And favorite athletes, I'm going to go with, depends on how you like to say it, Hakeem or Akeem Olajuwon. Nice. <laughs> because, uh, it, the back-to-back championships were kind of in my, at uh, the end of my high school years, and it really made a difference on me, and I love the Rockets. Awesome. My name is uh, Joe Kerr, and I'm the creative director with uh, Premium Goods. Uh, enjoying my 18th year with the company. And my favorite athlete, I'd say, uh, I guess basketball my first passion. So I'd have to say from my 90s uh, days of uh, viewing the Rockets, I'd say Vernon Maxwell. He was always my, cool. he was like yeah. my, first, my first favorite. Mad Max. Nice, and nice. Your career could vote now. That's awesome. So congrats on that. That's a beautiful thing, man. Consistency, is, we love to see it. Mike, who's your favorite? Yeah, I, I got to go Rockets as well. I'm a big Rockets fan. And Tracy McGrady has always been one of my all-time favorites. And I wish we could have got him a little longer. But I appreciate what he did with the team while he was there. And I swear we didn't plan this, but I'm also going Houston Rockets. We did not, <laughs> we did not premeditate this. But you know, I got to go prime beard, baby. I'm going James Harden. Just the step back, foul drawing king, man. It's so much fun to watch this. Great times. You should um, stay with us. <laughs> he might come back one day. You never know. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like a lot of longtime sports fans, a lot of longtime basketball fans, what brings us here today is your collab with Adidas and the partnership with that and how it kind of ties in with footwear and shoes. You guys are in the sneaker shop right now, but automotives and cars are a huge part of the collab too. So I guess let's start with sneakers. Why sneakers? Why, how did that come into your existence, I guess, into your lives? Um, I mean, how could it not? Um, but <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love comfort and style? Um for me, I think my journey started probably in junior high when I started like taking an interest to sneakers and uh, kind of the feeling that they made me feel when I had a new pair or a cool pair. Um, after that, I, I enjoyed them in college, didn't have a lot of money. So whenever I got them, they were great to help me, you know, stop along the campus. And then, then I moved to New York and it was in your face everywhere and wonderful and things I had never seen before. So it really opened my eyes and I knew we needed that in Texas. So it just made sense. Yeah, I have a, I have a, um, I guess a pretty cliche story. It's like, you know, I didn't have a lot of cool shoes growing up. I uh, always noticed people with cool kicks on and stuff during school. 
but at, you know just being attracted to that cool factor but when, once you're able to afford shoes on your own and once i started actually like collecting sneakers and being on like sneaker uh, message boards and stuff like that like in the early 2000s uh, not to age myself but uh just really feeling the community part of sneaker collecting i think that's what really attracted me to and then like just like the hunt and the search for like hard to find sneakers makes complete sense why you're in business for 20 years now that's like the through line of every sneaker head it's, <laughs> i wanted them couldn't have them now i can now i'm obsessed or it's my business or it's you know it's some part of your livelihood exactly. so what's one of your favorite this either adidas sneakers or lines again i'm going james harden just because Harden stuff rocks, but if you could choose like one type of Adidas shoe through all of the history, what would you go through? Oh, I don't have a like a historic one per se, but I'm a big fan of anything Pharrell touches. What yeah, is nice clothing, but definitely his shoes. I like his human made collection. Mm -hmm. I actually wore those a little too much that my staff had to tell me to stop. <laughs> They're just so comfy and they look great. The colors and how they take color is amazing. What's the little message on on the top? You know, keeps you motivated through the day. Yeah. How about you, Joe? Uh, from my high school days, again, referencing, um, I'd say the Climacool was probably the, the standout model that uh, really stood out to me. Just good design, you know, performance, somewhat based, but more uh, just trying to solve a solution of how to keep people's feet cool. But nowadays, I'd say more like classic styles like Stan Smith's or uh, Spezial's are kind of more my... My jam. Those are definitely taking over lately. Those specials, like those really like historical like models they're pulling from the vault, have been a huge, huge popular thing. I think whenever I I, I think back to my favorite goes back to older one as well. It's like the ZX series, the ZX eight thousand in particular. Mm -hmm. If I can pick one colorway, it'd be the Aquas. Uh, I love. I they work. did a pink one for girls at the same time, and I love it. It's like yeah, it's like just such a good looking shoe. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I mean, so the climate cool, I think Tim Duncan made that actually cool for a little bit too. Just like the, I remember those are old marketing ads and I believe they retroed about a year ago too. So that's a good pick. Harden volume eight, still probably my favorite. I know he's not in Houston right now, but those designs just go crazy, man. Like the, what the Harden line's been doing. I'm a huge basketball fan. So if it's, if, it, if you can play basketball in it, I'm probably into it. So actually we have 20 years for you guys. We can tell for our viewers viewing. There's a beautiful banner back there behind Jennifer's head, just 20 years of greatness. So, I mean, in all that amount of time, what's some kind of tip you have for someone trying to make, you know, a business center around their passion or what their interests are? I mean, Joe, you've also made 18 years as being a creative. So, like, what's one piece of advice from each of you that you would kind of give to someone looking to go down either one of your routes? Well, it's definitely important to have the passion because when the money's not there, you want to have a reason to come to work every day. Uh, but the other part is uh, just make sure you're uh, familiar that business is business. No matter what it is, you need to understand, you know, the, the proper things you need in line to sustain for 20 years, you know, whether it's accountants or lawyers or just a, a really good uh, team and a, you know, a strong sales team, but it's just bu business is business. Yeah. Um, as <clears throat> For me, I've been uh, kind of blessed just to have a great uh, boss and <laughs> to work with. Uh, I really can't see myself working for more than, you know, 10 whatever years in the same place. But um, just being in this industry has really kind of uh, encouraged me to be more creative. And I think that's something that I always had a passion for. So I think just trying to find how something that you are authentically passionate about and if you can fit it into the industry that you want to be in, then think you can find that way. I can definitely tell that, you know, from what you guys are saying and my experience in you guys' store, um, because, you know, when I, I what I've, I've been in Houston after I graduated college back in what, 2011, I've been here ever since. And, uh, cause I was not going back to Beaumont. It was, uh, that wasn't happening, <laughs> but I discovered you guys' store when I first moved here. And every time I went into your store, it is, I, I could say some other stores out there didn't have the most pleasant experience every time, but you guys, a store, every time it was like, your, your people you have working there, you clearly have a passion for what they're doing. Um, you guys are always really good to, to your customers. You guys always had probably the, the coolest things out on the shelves. It wasn't just the same thing over and over again. I mean, I don't think any other store in Houston that I run into 
was you know selling some of the more like original things. I um, geez, it was uh, the Matumbos. I couldn't. I remember for the longest time the Matumbos with the tribal print on them, the Adidas. Looking for a pair. Whenever they came out, couldn't find them. You guys had them on shelves. You guys had like a really a lot of just really diverse collection, and it shows in what you guys are saying, the attitude, and you guys really bring it into the store. So that's really cool. And that's that's if you guys are wondering, listen, how you have a store open for twenty years? This is how you do it. I appreciate yeah. that. That that means a lot. I mean, honestly, the experience that you have in store is really important to all of us because we've all been on the other side of that, and uh, it doesn't feel good, especially when you're spending your money um, in a place. Um, you should all around just have good feelings when you leave. In an increasingly digital world, it feels good to go into a store and not only try something on, but just see stuff. Pictures never do justice. You know, it's just seeing it in person, holding product is powerful. And also Jennifer really investing in like the right kind of nuts and bolts, the lawyers, the accountants, the things that keep things actually moving that people don't want to think about when they want to start like a shoe business. Extremely important. Right. So 20 years is not an accident. Um, so I think we have here, I'm kind of curious what the connection for the Caney high school is, but, a but a portion of each sale of these, um, campus 2000 shoes we have coming out with you guys, um, go to their auto tech program. So where did your love of cars start from? And like, where was that passion ignited? How did that happen? I can start with the school part for us where we're working with uh, Cornerstone, which is a really um, awesome part of Adidas that uh, focuses on like us uplifting our community or doing things for our community. And uh, we, when the shoe was designed, we thought what better place to give funds to than a program that helps the youth uh, develop their skills in the automotive world. So uh, we kind of uh, reached our channels and found uh, Decaney. It has a great program great kids we were able to get in there and do some interviews with them and uh, we're really looking forward to selling through and, and contributing to their program yeah as far as like passion for cars is i i'm not the most car knowledgeable as well i i have a i feel like a good eye for good design and uh good style and i feel like uh, within sneakers and in cars there's a lot of that same they kind of mirror each other like say for like daily drivers you can kind of compare that to grs heat you can kind of compare that to like rare exotics there's luxury cars and luxury shoes so there's a lot of like similarities and also the we love the energy that specifically within houston that we we observe as far as the different car communities and we also wanted to tell a story that goes beyond what houston is most known for which is uh, slabs and slab culture but there's also like a very rich scene of uh, all kinds of other uh, in the automotive uh, space i mean um, mike can probably uh testify for this we as houstonians live in our cars like it is yeah. so huge from one side <laughs> it's an hour i mean even if for him to go to beaumont that's like an hour and a half and and that's still kind of like right outside of houston <laughs> so uh it's important for us uh, i think every houstonian their car is important to them because it's what gets us to where we have to be and hopefully it's luxurious and fun at the same time <laughs> yeah you aren't lying the same time it takes for me to get to beaumont now we live up north my family and i and my wife and kids we live in like closer to like the spring conroe area so it takes me the same amount of time to get to beaumont than it does to get to the galleria area so <laughs> i just picked my poison at that point <laughs> exactly you know from an outsider i mean traffic's everywhere but i would have houston historically i guess notoriously Gross. has bad traffic to the point where <laughs> i knew about it before this conversation happened but that's such a cool point to bring up between being in a car every day just through traffic and nonsense and having like a pair of shoes on all day. Like you want to have something you feel good in, you feel comfortable in. And that's also kind of what premium goods is selling in store, right? This cars for your feet? Makes sense. Flintstone stuff? I don't know how to best phrase that, but I'm thinking like Fred Flintstone, <laughs> he just pounded through the, um, through the concrete. Um, but, you know, Joe, I think you brought up a really good point of just how there are all those intersections. The Your collection, I guess your sneaker here, um, the Campus 2000 has those like little nods to cars itself. Um, what are some of those? I'm really interested in like a hidden pocket somewhere, I believe, right? <laughs> yeah, we, we included like um, little design elements that would kind of... Uh, sure. Yeah, it was like, I was, um, it's not what the original lace is, but I'm wearing today. Hey, there you go. We made yeah, it your own. 
we yeah. put design elements uh, within the sneaker that were kind of familiar to anybody that is in their car, works on their car, has a passion for cars. Uh, the main part is like this cracked leather, uh, just to give it that aged look. Like if someone's working on a project car, that car is not always perfect. It didn't start off that way. And so it's kind of like a work in progress uh, situation. The the Harry Suede has that same thing, kind of aging effect. Uh, inside, as you referenced already, is that uh, hidden compartment, kind of like a glove compartment. And uh, awesome. if you actually purchase the shoes, there'll be some extra additional patches that are removable. Cool. Yeah, you can kind of assort it the way you uh, and style it the way you feel. Um, there's a little hexagon nut, um, just referencing back to you know working on your uh, working on your ride, and then also it has like the diamond plated. Um, uh, they're so clean. Now I gotta ask you: Is there yeah, is there like, a Houston version coming out with just slabs hanging off the side of it? Uh, <laughs> here we go. You got your ape hangers on it. <laughs> Man, so I just love. I mean, the patches you brought up, but just the work shirt kind of tie in. Like I want to have one with my name Robbie on it on the shirt and kind of match <laughs> my shoes. That'd be. Hey, if you guys ever do work shirt collection down the road, that'd be fire with the sneakers well, we actually, too. We actually the, the pairing. Uh, uh, apparel collection that went with the shoes um, does have uh, like uh, Dickie's mechanic shirts with the uh, with the same mechanic style patches on there. So tying back to the shoes, that is so cool. And for our listeners here, just if you're curious, like, hey, where can where can I get a pair of those shoes? Um, they actually come out a day after this recording, so they come out October 24th. By the time you're hearing this, probably yesterday. Um, 130 dollars to campus, 2,000. Go buy a pair; they're fantastic. This it's really cool well, how for our store you, so it's it's pretty limited uh, and you can get it on well offer online as well yes fight for it. I'm kidding don't go fight for, <laughs> for it I'm <laughs> totally kidding I'm don't do that <laughs> it's just like they're really hot shoes man those are Not when great. a collab actually when you can have a story and actually hold the shoe without looking at the story and kind of piece it together anyway that's a powerful collab like you don't have to be told that's about cars to really pick up on it without it being overt right. Like the little nut on the top of the um, shoelace hole. Little things like that are just, that's why you love sneakers, right? That's why you've been in it. You saw stuff like that growing up. You're like, ooh, if I have a sneaker one day, <laughs> I'm going to do something cool. And then you two executed. So that's just, that's really cool. Um, so, I mean, again, the Campus 2000 kind of pays homage to the automotive culture. Um, what is like... What's one of your favorite early 2000s or 2000s either car trends or sneaker trends? Like that era is kind of really popping off again. And a lot of people, potentially listeners, are finding out about 2000 aesthetic for the first time. I think we've all lived through it. So what was what's one of your favorite to kind of pass on to the kids? Like what was cool to us? What'd you like? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the time that most of my memories with cars are associated with. Uh, like many people, you know getting your uh, first car or getting access to your first car, that's almost like a sign of independence. And so it really opens you up to hang out with your friends. I remember going to like car meetups uh, late at night. Uh, they'd be raided by cops sometimes. I have <laughs> were arrested at some of these car meets, uh, going to car shows, you know, all kinds of things. Going down certain, there's like certain roads in Houston that are like notorious for just like cruising, like Westheimer or Richmond back in the day. So these were all kind of the kind of energy and memories we wanted to to bring out and also kind of speak to the youth that, you know, they're still kind of carrying on this culture. And, uh, yeah, it, it's multi-generational, like sneakers and, and cars. Uh, for me personally, a car is not complete without rims. Like, you can buy any car, but you got to get your 22s on. <laughs> <laughs> Standard. Get in there. Yeah, well, That's like, the I, bare minimum. No smaller. Car rims. <laughs> Wait, so I got to ask. Between you guys, what were each of you's, your first cars? Like, what was the first car you had? Whether it be like uh, the the the, the hoopty down the street just to get to and from, or was it like something nice that you guys saved up for? What, what was that first car you were riding with? I always wanted like an import, you know, something I could work on, like yeah, like a Civic or whatever. But like, I got passed down a Camry, a 1990 Camry, so I didn't really do much with that. I eventually got a car that. I think a Mitsubishi Gallant that was stick shift. So 
I didn't really like the car, but I was pretty pumped that I could learn how to drive stick, kind of learn how to launch down Third pedal, <laughs> those kind of things. And then the car that I finally uh, got that I probably was proud of and really enjoyed driving was uh, I got an Audi, uh, like a 2010 Audi wagon that I, yeah, that I really liked. Um, for me, it was a 1984. This was in 96. I got this car, 1984 Honda Accord, which I put rims on because that's what I do. <laughs> Wait, what are you 22s though? Light sucker was up in the air. What? <laughs> right? uh, we, we named it. My best friend and I was Big Papa, and it got us everywhere we needed to go, right? <laughs> that is awesome. I know. Well, the best part of the story is uh, at that time we went to a comedy show. It was Sinbad. I don't know if anybody remembers Sinbad. Yeah. yeah. And then he started talking about like hoopties and who had a hoopty, and everybody pointed at me, and I got clowned Dang. off for 30 minutes, and I had to drive them home in that hoopty. <laughs> It would have been walking like, nope, yeah. you made me a topic of a, a comedy show. We're out. <laughs> that is such a fun. Than that, right? But I think my, my favorite of the cars I've owned is, and I had three of them. I went through three different ones, but I really love the Volkswagen Torre because it was kind of like something sporty and affordable for me when I first uh, opened the store. And so I, I enjoyed that one a lot. And each of them had 22s. <laughs> hey, there you go. Consistent. <laughs> right. So Jennifer, I got you beat by like... My first car was also an Accord, but mine was kind of cool. I had a V6 2000 Accord, like a two seater. I still see those. I still <laughs> see it on the road, and I still I get a little I get a little nostalgic. I want to go get one. This Accord, and also Joe, don't sleep on the title. Like that thing is still on the road right now. Someone's loving that car. Man. Someone's out here loving that right now. So, so I got I got everyone's year beat. Yeah. My first car was a '82 El Camino, but. I, 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 switched the engine out. I switched the engine out. It was an old six-cylinder, and I switched the engine out. I, I put a 350 small block in it. So a 16-year-old with almost 400 horses and then just a purely metal car truck. I'm not sure how I ended up getting away with that, but I appreciate my parents for letting me do that. <laughs> You're killing it on I-10. <laughs> oh, man. I, it's like, and I wouldn't, I, you know, I never got on ticket in that car, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, I think people were more... Uh, interested in what it was by the time i got stopped so they're like oh this is cool keep going (laughs) mike walked so jesse pinkman from breaking bad could run (laughs) like the el camino (laughs) that's crazy Uh, so actually okay mike's first car was actually kind of cool so i guess jennifer and joe still cool cars but what what would have been like the dream first car like what what did you have in your head or even now like man if i was young and i had for me, it's like an M3. Never gonna happen. Never did happen. But like, what's like, what was that early two thousands dream car though? What was that like? For my first car, my dream car would have been, and I actually enjoyed it in the campaign. That that super was gorgeous. I wanted a super so bad. But my like, you made it is a uh, a seven fifty a BMW seven fifty was like the baller car. Like when heat when they roll up in it, it's like oh, you made it. So. Yeah, mine would be something a little bit more practical just reflecting my age uh but something with some with some still some giddy up uh an amg wagon is pretty much what i would uh, love to have now you like the wagons the, the european yeah. flavor man like that's dope yeah. they i yeah, mean they're I all over europe back. <laughs> that's so cool but it's still like practical right you can like put the groceries back in there and smoke someone like yeah. best of both worlds so <laughs> before we kind of get out of here what most excites you about this collab with you have we have dropping with adidas and like what's been that process like what what was that process like i'll speak first <laughs> it's been fun that the this was a launch that we were able to do as a team so it's been fun working with everybody here who uh to create something and to see it come to life uh, I really enjoyed the um, campaign video so far. Like uh, one of them, I felt like I needed to put a seatbelt on for because it was just intense speed, which was really fun. <laughs> and then uh, I'm just honestly, the sh- launch is tomorrow and I'm looking forward to just seeing people walk around in these in the city because it's just, it, it's a shoe that just keeps giving, especially with the patches. So. Yes, I think for me personally, this is like one of the uh, biggest projects that I've gotten a chance to like work on uh, personally more often on hand than anybody else um, on our team. And uh, just that we were able to partner with somebody like Adidas that has a cornerstone that's able to kind of support us and 
giving back to uh, our community and also uh Houston's all, not really known for being in a uh, an Adidas kind of city and so anything we can do to kind of diversify and kind of uh, uh broaden people's at viewpoint on like uh sneakers uh, I think that's always great That's awesome. I mean, I was talking to other people in other places like, you know, Robbie's out in Portland. Um, we have, you know, a lot of our communities and various places that have these very different sneaker communities. And I feel like ours here in Houston doesn't get the di- like doesn't get the diversity it deserves for such a big city. So you guys doing that, taking and say, hey, you know, we want to work with this. We want to bring out this model. I think it's awesome because it helps to bring so much more flavor to the to the sneaker world here because we see the same things. I mean, you guys are out and about, especially in your area, in the Rice Village area. Whether it be the kids in the, at the school there or just in the Galleria area, you kind of see the same things over and over again. And then it's not to anyone's fault. It's just that's what's kind of pumped into the area. So it's cool that you guys were able to bring something different and then give it, you know, this double double sided story. Again, the cars and the sneakers both have this really niche following and and I think it's just a great partnering what you guys did. The shoe looks amazing. Uh, they look great with pretty much anything you put on. Looking at the shoe and looking at some of the uh, the pictures I saw um, in, in, in socials and things like that. It's just a very versatile shoe, just like a car. It can get through anything. Looks like this shoe can get through pretty much anything as well. So I guess really from one sneakerhead to another, congratulations, because that's just yeah. such – like 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 cars, we all kind of have in the back of our head, like, oh, if I ever got a chance to design a shoe or <laughs> I would always want to have my own shoe and you guys are living it. So just, if anything, a big congrats to that and the future release tomorrow and 20 more years of success really is what we're trying to say. Thank you. Most so definitely. we'll link everybody's social, like where to find the store, all that good stuff in this episode. But Jennifer and Joe, you two have been great. Thank yeah. you, Adidas, for helping set this up. Mike, you're always great, and we'll um, link where to find Mike, too. But <laughs> um, really appreciate both of you, and go get a pair of the shoes. Do it. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all. Hey, everyone. This is Nick again. Before you take off, do us a solid and head over to Apple Podcasts to leave us a review. Give us a rating on Spotify and Amazon Music, and make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel because we have even more video content coming soon. Speaking of new content, we have an amazing community of sneaker enthusiasts that hang out in our Sneaker History Discord on a daily basis. While sneakers is a connection point that brought us all together, we've all discovered countless shared passions that we have in common with each other. We recently launched a couple of new podcasts directly from our community. One of them is a Formula One podcast. If you're an F1 fan like me, the Exhaust Notes podcast is your weekly fix of Formula One fun. It's hosted by myself, Rohit Malhotra, and Todd Yates. New episodes drop every Tuesday. I've been wearing fitted hats for years and collecting my favorite teams since I was a little leaguer. It has been awesome to see so many new fans getting into fitteds in recent years. Crown and Stitch is our new talk show about fitted hats with Dexter, Keith, and myself, where we talk about fitted hats, snapbacks, throw in some obscure hats because we all kind of like some funky stuff once in a while, don't we? Copping, collecting, and so much more. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Hit the links in the show notes for this episode to give our new shows a listen, and be on the lookout for more new podcasts dropping soon. Last but not least, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to have someone show their appreciation. Thank you all for the support, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.